tells us the wilderness and the dry land shall be glad, the desert shall rejoice and blossom, like the crocus it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy in singing. Our lighting of Advent wreath will be led by Brian Boyle, one of our newest members, and I invite you to join with that on the um, insert that you can find in the bulletin, Brian. Teach us the ways of peace, hope, joy, and trust. Come, O come, Emmanuel. Please join in our call of worship found in the front of the bulletin. God's Spirit has led us here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is peace. God's Spirit has led us here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is hope. God's Spirit has led us here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is joy. God's Spirit has led us here. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is love. There is a sweet, sweet Spirit in this place. And we know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. Let us join in our opening hymn of Come All Ye Faithful, hymn number 234. <laughs>
Monitor Bulletin. Let us pray. God with us, Emmanuel, as we draw near to the manger, focus our attention to your presence among us as we consider the love, care, and faith of Mary and Joseph. Strengthen our faith as we prepare our hearts and homes for Christmas. Be our peace. Amen. You may be seated. It is a joy to welcome all of you who are gathered here today, whether guests or members of the congregation and those who are gathered online. We are glad to have all of you here. For our guests, we do have cards in the pew racks, and we ask that you fill it out and put it into our offering plate when that is passed later this morning so that we have an idea of who you are and can welcome you back again. Also, if you have prayer requests, there's also pew cards for those and we ask that you put those either in the offering plate or in the jar at the back of the, the service, uh, letting us know, especially if you'd like to have it printed in an upcoming bulletin so that we can make sure we have information correct and spelling correct. If you are looking around in our congregation and see guests here with us this morning, please be sure to give them a warm welcome. We have had a little bit of discussion about whether it was time to make some changes uh, in this post-COVID era, and one of those uh, questions that's come up has been a little bit around the time of our, our worship service. And so we put out a survey. It's not going to be definitive, but it may give us an idea of if there is interest in adjusting the beginning time of our worship in Sunday school. And that is now available on that table. Those who are on our uh, church roll also received a copy in the mail with a Christmas letter that should have arrived sometime this week, hopefully. Um, and if you have your survey with you, if you will either fold it up and put it into the offering plate, or if you'll leave it on the back table for us, uh, we'll gather those as we receive them over the next couple of weeks. And then at our next administrative council meeting, we can have another discussion with some input from the, uh, the larger congregation. I'd like to thank everyone who has brought the beautiful poinsettias this morning to share with us uh, this week and next week as we prepare to celebrate Christmas. Each week we've added a little bit to our sanctuary and the beautiful decorations. Thank you to all the elves who helped with that. Um, you'll find a listing in your bulletin this morning of who has given the poinsettias and who they are in honor or in memory of. Uh, please take a moment to look through that list. And uh, I'd like to thank Debbie for having done that and all the wonderful inserts that are in our bulletin. There's also one on United Methodist Family Services or Compass. And United Methodist Family Services is a special offering, uh, mission offering for this month. And they help children across Virginia who are in need. They are children uh, typically in foster care. Um, some of them are in their own homes with family members, but they have special needs that need extra attention uh, with educational help, um, social services assistance of various types, um, children who need extra educational help. And they, this fund helps to cover some extras beyond what um, the, the family's insurance is able to pay to help these children receive the mental health services that they need, the educational services that they need, and to have the placements that they need. They work very closely with social services in placing children in foster care and actually help to train uh, parents for, or individuals for foster care, to be foster care parents. So we are grateful for all the monies that are able to go to help them. It is a program of our Virginia Annual Conference and they do not receive any portion of that money. So your gifts uh, throughout the year and at this time of year are the only extra funding that they receive over insurance. This afternoon we have a program beginning at 5 o'clock, which will be Carol's and the Story of Christmas. We'll have practice at 3.30. Um, for that, after the, the program at 5 o'clock, there will be refreshments following in the fellowship hall downstairs. Is there anything else I need to say about that, Tina? No, just come. Come, come, enjoy. come and bring your friends. That's right. Great. And then we'll have a Christmas Eve candlelight service 
on Saturday evening at 7 o'clock here at the church. I hope uh, many of you will be able to be here. I know some of you will already be traveling, but I hope that those in town will be able to meet um, here and enjoy welcoming the birth of Christ that evening. We will have services on Christmas Day on uh, Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, and I hope that many of you will also be able to join us for worship that morning or to be able to follow our service as it is um, uh, put up on the website later that day. And then there's Gen the United States Day of the General Assembly that will be held in January. Uh, registration is, is coming close to a close, and so we invite you to, to check out more information on our conference website, baumc.org, um, and you'll see that there is a special site there for UN Day. And you can also go to it from the calendar and type in January 26th to get to that. For more information, it will be held in Richmond, just blocks away from the Virginia Capitol, and during the day, um, much of the day, will be spent going to the Capitol, spending time uh, getting to meet with senators and representatives, attending um, committee meetings, and even a few minutes with the uh, General Assembly uh, session as it convenes at noon that day. Uh, lunch and breakfast, uh, continental breakfast, are included in your registration price. Are there other announcements to be looked at today? Yes, David. Those are the points that is if you check and make sure that they're correct. The poinsettia list will, will run again in next Sunday's bulletin, right. and if you see any need, to, uh, need of corrections, please let Debbie know as soon as possible so she can make those. And also any other um, contributions to the bulletin you may have, get them to her as soon as possible so she uh, has time to celebrate Christmas this week too. Any other announcements? If not, will you please join me in prayer? Holy One, you send us a new life in so many forms. Open our minds that we may recognize it. Open our hearts that we may receive it. Open our bodies that we may embrace it. Open our souls that we may live it. Open this day and all days. Amen. Amen. Please turn your hymnal to the back to page 801 for our responsive reading. Today we are using Psalm 80, and we'll be using verses eight, uh, 1 through 7 on the first page, and then verses 17 through 19. Also, we will be reading response 1, wherever you see the, the brownish color R, and we'll be do, doing that in unison. Please join in. And please stand as you are able and by the Lord's Spirit. I am the vine, you are the branches, rooted in faith and love. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who lead Joseph like a flock, you who are enthroned upon the cherubim and shine forth. In the presence of Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh, stir up your might and come to save us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine, that we may be saved. O Lord of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with bread and tears, and given them the tears to drink in full measure. You make us the scorn of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among us. Restore us, O God of hosts, let your face shine, that we may be saved. I am the vine, you are the branches, rooted in faith and love. And then at verse 17. Let us your hand be upon those right hand, the ones who you have made strong for yourself. Then we will never turn back from you. Give us life, and we will call on your name. You source the Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine, that we may be saved. I am the vine, you are the branches, rooted in faith and love. Thank you, may be seated. And our epistle lesson this morning is from Romans chapter 1, and that is Linda, who is going to read us in that this morning. Page 1691 in your people. 
King 91. Chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. Paul, a servant of Jesus, Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle and set apart for the gospel of God. The gospel he promised beforehand through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures regarding his son, who as to his human nature was a descendant of David, and who had through the spirit of holiness was declared with power to be the Son of God by his resurrection from the dead, <coughs> Jesus Christ our Lord, through him and for his name's sake, we receive grace and a, a, apostleship to call people from among all the Gentiles to the obedience that comes from faith. And you also are among those who are called to belong to Jesus Christ. To all in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our hymn of meditation is, What Child Is This? Hymn number 219.
as we hear the story of the birth of Jesus the Messiah from a, a different perspective and, and uh, storytelling than we sometimes hear in the Gospel of Luke. This can be found in your Pew Bible on page 1450. Here are the words recorded in Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived of her is from the Holy Spirit. She will be your son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, may your Holy Spirit work within us so that we might welcome your advent among us with joy and receptive hearts, even when your advent turns our hearts, even when your advent turns our world upside down. Help us to receive you, not as we would have you be, but as you are. Even if you must shake us up and put us in different places than we intended to be, give us grace and courage to receive you, and in receiving you, to follow you, give us the courage not only to be grateful, not only to gratefully celebrate your birth among us, but also boldly to participate in your mission to the world so that the world, shaken up by your loving presence among us, may be turned right side up. Amen. 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 Throughout the Gospel of Matthew, the Holy Spirit is a driving force in Jesus' ministry. That's a major emphasis in Matthew. The community that is formed by the work of Jesus will be a people that are empowered by the Holy Spirit. That same Spirit that enabled Jesus to withstand so much in his life, including the devil's tempting offers and Jesus' uh, challenges as he will continue to ministry and as he went to the cross. But Matthew begins his book a little differently than all the others. And it, for some people, it can be a tedious reading as we begin with the book of genealogy, or in Greek, the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings. And it's immediately followed uh, by a very detailed genealogy of David all the way down to Joseph. For Matthew, the birth of Jesus is a world-changing event. It is the fulfillment of God's intentions for the world that God has been patiently, continuously working out through the children of Abraham. It's a birth that is signifying in this child nothing less than the creation by God of a whole new world that God has been working on all along. The verses that we read today from the opening scene in the Gospel help us to transition into the story. Our verse begins with the word now. And we realize that the narrative stage has been set. And then we get what has occurred. What has already happened is that there has been this engagement made by Mary and Joseph. Yeah, in this day and time, Mary and Joseph may or may not have ever met prior to their engagement. And they are considered husband and wife even though the wedding has not yet occurred. And it is a legal binding arrangement where unfaithfulness was considered adultery and the agreement could be only broken by death or by divorce, even though the wedding had not yet occurred. And Mary's pregnancy is considered proof of adultery. 
and the penalty for adultery for women was to be put to death, according to the book of Deuteronomy. Joseph became aware of her pregnancy well before he became aware that it was by divine source. And so the law of Moses required this capital punishment in such cases, and um, even though things had changed a little bit, it was usually a very severe, humiliating penalty that could include stoning. But then we have the angel's action in verses 23 and 21. And then there's the direct access of the angel to Joseph, speaking to him in his sleep, of saying this child will be given the symbolic name of God is with us. Then we immediately after that get Joseph adopting Jesus into his Davidic line by naming him and thereby claiming him as his own son. What man in here would want to find out on their wedding night or their wedding day that their bride was already pregnant with another person's child and still want to go through with it and claim that child as their own? Lots of challenges here. All kinds of difficult things surrounding this nativity story. An unwed pregnancy, the law that says she should be killed, the need for them to immediately after their wedding set off on a very long journey to travel to register. The divine messengers, how many of you would even welcome that and listen to the angels giving you these strange messages. What woman in here wouldn't think something strange and very scary was going on when they found themselves pregnant? Especially in that age, in that place. And then that doesn't even take into consideration the reaction of the families and all the challenges of not only traveling while pregnant and not having a home at that point in time because they were traveling and just married and all of the other things that go along with it. But then there's the political aspect. Herod, King Herod, the old fox sitting in Jerusalem with all the military clout of the empire to back him up, knew how dangerous babies could be. Herod knew that he had better take matters into his own hand while he still had time before this child could mock him and, and the impotence of the old man. He knew from all of that, what the prophets had said, of what all of the messengers had told him, that this child, this child, was going to be dangerous for him. It was not a time to wait for the unknown, the potential growing child to come to fulfillment. With babies, Herod knew it was the unknown that both attracts and repels which leads Jesus and his family into two very, very uncertain years as they try to stay ahead of Herod. Charles Kettering, engineer and inventor, writes, the world hates change, yet it is the only thing that has brought progress. And what brings more change to your households than a new baby? A new baby full of health issues and all the colds and diseases that they bring home as they go off to school, all the schedule upsets, the lack of sleep, the focus on them first. Of all that you have to do to take care of such a child. So there are all kinds of difficult things that we must deal with in our own lives. But again, has a, a glimpse of just what was so challenging in those days and what God in, in, is thinking of for us, planning for us, the advent that Jesus is giving us an opportunity to prepare to experience. We deal with things like illnesses and grief. 
the death of friends and family, but also the grief that possibly comes from the loss of job or changing of a home setting or even the changes in those who help to take care of us and our co-workers changing. Some are experiencing empty nest syndrome. Others are changing with the additions of children and grandchildren into their households and their families. Others are changing how they had done, always done things. They had to change because of all the situations around us that are constantly pressuring us. No two days are ever exactly the same because change is always occurring. Some folks are experiencing bad marriages. Some are just saying it's life. Some of us are experiencing the challenges of aging and others are experiencing money problems. <coughs> I remember the challenges that my father had and my mother had when they suddenly went into retirement. There wasn't much boredom in their household, but there was a lack of feeling the needed, of feeling like they were contributing in a positive manner, and there was the lack of social interaction. Some people now have disabilities that they never had before that create their own challenges. Sometimes it's just our work, the schedules that keep us from doing what we want, maybe even coming to worship or, or spending time with our family, especially at Christmas. And I think of all of those who will be working on Christmas Eve and some who will be working on Christmas Day so that we are safe, secure, and have all the things that we want. I think about the, the challenges that our children are experiencing in school, whether they be six or 21, the challenges of the educational system as we know it today and the safety concerns that they experience. There are all kinds of difficulties in the world all around us. And we literally don't even have to go out the door to list them, to see them, to experience them. And yet Matthew comes to us and says that the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, a name which means God is with us. God is with us. There's a story of a woman who was named Betty who tried to cram all of her Christmas preparations into a single day. She started at 9 a.m. and she shopped her entire Christmas list, bought a Christmas tree, and poinsettias, ordered a turkey, carried home the groceries for Christmas dinner, brought up from the basement the big box of Christmas lights and decorations, and finally at midnight, finished carefully gift wrapping presents for her husband, Herb, and their three daughters. Wearily, she began to congratulate herself on a job well done, and then she suddenly remembered, the Christmas cards, I forgot to send the Christmas cards. Tired, but determined, she signed and prepared for mailing all 89 cards on her list. Then she topped off her day's work by writing a check to her department store. When the holidays were over, the extent of her exhaustion at the end of the busy day became apparent. Her check to the department store was returned by the bank with an incorrect signature notation, for she had signed the check, Betty, her, and the girls. <laughs> In a Roman Catholic elementary school a few days before Christmas, the curtain was about to go up on a nativity play, and the centerpiece of the set was a crash, complete with statues of Mary, Joseph, and three wise men, shepherds, sheep, and other animals. Two nuns were busy making last-minute adjustments to the children's costumes, and the school principal was standing by, keeping an eye on all of the preparations. And suddenly, in a panic, one of the nuns rushed up to her and said, Mother Superior, we forgot the baby Jesus. With a remark, cry smile, Mother Superior replied, that's exactly the trouble with this world. For Christmas is nearly upon us. And even though you may have gotten a thing or two in your Christmas preparations, we are down to the wire, and it is the don't forget the baby Jesus time. It is time for us to really ponder 
the meaning of the incarnation for your life and for the lives of all others. Frank Beale tells how he was touched by the story of a hungry child who prayed earnestly one Christmas for food and toys, but nothing happened. She related her prayers to a cynical friend who asked with a sneer, what happened to this God of yours? Why didn't he hear and answer your prayers? To that child, she answered simply, I am sure he heard me and told someone to bring me a Christmas gift, but I guess they forgot. There is more than a childish naivete in her reply. More often than not, the problems in the world are not the fault of God, but are because we do not fulfill our part in the partnership with God. Like Mary, we are called to be partners with God and accepting the challenges and the privilege that it means when we obey God. Neo, excuse me, no, Leo Erskine writes, the good news of Advent is, behold, your God is coming. It is a promise of divine presence that means that there is judgment, but that judgment makes room for salvation. In Luke, we are assured of the birth of Jesus, meaning the promise of God's redeeming love by the means of the name Emmanuel. We are reminded again and again and again, God is with us. God is with us if we open ourselves to God. The incarnation transforms forever the way God sees us and relates to us. Like Mary, you will never know God's thoughts unless you are told. To receive an unmistakable word from God tailored just for you, you may need to be as open and receptive to God as Mary was, as Abraham was, as Daniel was, as Joseph was. So open and receptive was he to Daniel that God interrupted Daniel's prayers three times to tell him, Daniel, you are greatly beloved. So imagine what your response would be if God's messenger to, were to announce to you, rejoice and be glad, the Lord is with you. God's blessing is upon you. You are God's beloved and in him you have found favor. I thought you ought to know. We, as humans, want an orderly, predictable world. A world that goes in a direction that suits us. And yet, from the first, from his birth by the Virgin Mary, Jesus Christ brings a disruption of the accustomed order of things. For the world to go in the direction that God intends for the world to go, there must be disruption, dislocation, and disharmony with things as they are, so that God can put things as they should be. In each of our lives, we find that following Jesus necessarily entails being disrupted, discombobulated by him. Like Joseph, we must be ready to have our definitions of righteousness redefined, to move with Christ if we are in Christ. So many people complained about churches being disrupted during COVID. And yet, for many of us pastors, we saw that disruption as a positive thing. Because it meant that we could no longer continue to try to do things the way we've always done and continue to expect results that we were not seeing. We had to stop and rethink what we were doing and why we are doing it and what kind of impact it is having on the world. A lot of churches got rid of some of the busy activities and focused more and more on how we actually love in the world around us. How we actually witness through our actions and our words to the people that he need to hear about Christ. So that more people experience God is with us so that we can truly be 
the hands and feet of Christ, helping to bring light into this world. For the main emphasis of the story is the promise of life, of God's grace in our lives, of being judged and given grace, of being reminded that God is with us now and comes to us in the baby Jesus, Emmanuel. It is scripture fulfilled, but it is with disruption, with challenge, and with great beauty. Madeline Lingle writes, this is the irrational season when love blooms bright and wild. Had Mary been filled with reason, there had been no room for the child. Let us pray. God of grace, you put on flesh and come to live among us. You make us new in a million ways each day. You never hesitate to become small and vulnerable, fitting into each heart, each life. May your word fit into our hearts this day. And may it grow until it is born anew in our lives, ready to make us whole once more. Amen. Amen. Will you please stand as you are able and join me as we affirm our faith together using the affirmation on page 886 of the World Methodist Social Affirmation. We believe in God, creator of the world, and of all people, and Jesus Christ incarnate among us, who died and rose again, and in the Holy Spirit, present with us to guide, strengthen, and comfort. We believe God, our We rejoice in every sign of God's kingdom, in the upholding of human dignity and community, in every expression of love, justice, and reconciliation, in each act of self-giving on behalf of others, in the abundance of God's gifts entrusted to us that all may have enough, and in all, in all responsible use of earth's resources. Glory be to God in all earth's peace. We confess our sin, individual and collective, our silence or action through the violation of human dignity based on race, class, age, sex, nation, or faith through the exploitation of people because of greed and indifference, through the misuse of power in personal, communal, national, and international life, through the search for security by those military and economic forces that threaten human existence, through the abuse of technology which endangers the earth and all life upon it. Lord have mercy, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy. We commit ourselves individually and as a community to the way of Christ, to take up the cross, to seek abundant life for all humanity, to struggle for peace with justice and freedom, to risk ourselves in faith, hope, and love, praying that God's kingdom may come. Thy kingdom come on earth, as it is in heaven. Amen.
Charlie and her family um, and her unexpected death, you said, um, and it's your grandson's friend. And family friend. Family and friend. Granddaughter played with her. And granddaughter played with her. Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, Liz. Um, a friend of Janet's and mine who's name is on, he lives down in Virginia Beach and he is going through treatment for uh, cancer. He's undergoing cancer treatment. Right. And also, um, uh, Betsy um, lost her brother, Betsy Gale. Um, Betsy Gale lost her brother. Her brother ben. Mm -hmm. And so all their family. So bro brother Ben's family and friends. Else. Yes. Yeah, um, prayers for the Neff family who lost a brother uh, Friday or Saturday. The Neff family who lost a brother Friday yeah. or Saturday? Yeah. I would say also we might want to lift up the Holton family and the death of one of our former First Ladies of Virginia. Governor Hawkins' widow died this week. Anyone else? Yes. Safe travels for everyone traveling during this holiday season. Safe travels for all of those who are, are traveling, definitely. And a holy and merry Christmas for all. May we each experience Christ's peace during this season. Please join me in a moment of prayer. I will lead us in prayer and we will end by saying the Lord's Prayer together. Let us pray. Father God, you are the parent of all existence, the heart of all that is. <clears throat> Today we reflect on the person of Joseph, his faith and his obedience. We are gathered here to celebrate your guiding and your saving love the example of which we see in Joseph's story. We remember during these days the magic of the Christmas story, the wonder of its images of power and humility. We relate to its concepts of simplicity and, its, and to its images of the ordinary, for they hold for us the truth that you are ever present to us, even as you were to Joseph. The crowd around him, we know, was unaware of the word you delivered to him, no one having any real sense of the true drama of his life. And so it is with so many today who buzz with the busyness of buying Christmas gifts and goods, but who fail to grasp the truth of what the symbols mean. We thank you, God, for the unobtrusive people who, in obedience to your calling, have been examples of your love and channels of your grace in our lives that you intrude into ordinary lives, coming with good news to believe, live, and to share. For the coming celebration of Christ's Mass, when with humble trust, we welcome again into our lives the one waiting to be born anew in us. Give us courage to risk following where you would lead us, to trust and to do what you ask. We pray for faith and action, contrary to the ways and the words of the world, Con contrary to the response that the world makes. Provide courage for those starting out to risk the unknown future with Jesus, the uncertain but grace journey in being a disciple. We pray for the upholding of people like Joseph, who, upon their lives, in spite of being judged as foolish by this world, they continue to follow and hear God's call. Bless us all, we pray, this day, even as you bless Joseph, that everyone's faith may be revitalized, everyone's hope rekindled. And so we come to you praying as Jesus taught us. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. As we consider our opportunities for discipleship in the coming days and weeks, we have the opportunity to give gifts of love this week to people who are unexpecting of that grace in their lives. This is also the United Methodist Family Services Offering Month, and so you are invited to make up an offering. You can, can mark it for Fletcher's Chapel Church, but then um, show that it is for United Methodist Family Services on your check or your envelope or um, in any way that you wish to give to the church this month for United Methodist Family Services. You're also invited to give to our budget so that we can continue to be a part of worldwide mission so that our church can, can not have to fund all that on our own but share in the joy and the responsibility of that and then focus our local missions uh, closer to home. We also can use volunteers. We will have, uh, of course, some volunteers who are helping out in this afternoon's service and we always are welcoming new persons to help host our coffee hour on our second Sundays to also help with the reading of the scriptures during worship and also participating in other ways. If you would like to do so, please uh, either sign up on our sign-up sheets that are on the front pew next to our fundraiser bucket or contact me uh, to talk more personally about the ways that you can be involved. God has given us the greatest gift, the gift of Emmanuel. God is with us. And God takes care of all of our needs so that we can help take care of others. And that we can, can give in many ways of our time, our talents, our gifts, and our service. This is an opportunity now to give of our monies so that we can enable others to also be in mission for Christ. Will our ushers please come?
calls you into service. Pray to be willing to risk a radical and a faithful response. The blessing of God the Savior, Jesus the incarnate Christ, and the Holy Spirit who enables obedience rests upon you. Amen. Amen. Amen.